Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. This is my refreshing spring reds bit part two. Uh, I don't know if you saw the first one, but um, it was a bit of a mishmash and uh, different grapes, different countries, four, five wines, four countries. Here we're a little bit more coherent. Uh, we have got three countries, but it's all the same grape variety, Pinot Noir. Uh, so let's just set into them. First wine we have got is uh, from Southern France. It is uh, Domaine Clavile, uh, and it's their 2011 uh, Pédoc. And um, I've had wines from these, these people before, and uh, uh, they, uh, they so you think of the longer dock as being maybe a bit too warm for Pinot Noir. Uh, not when you try these guys' wines. Maybe setting it up for a fall here, but uh, anyway, I'll give it a whirl. Well, it smells like Pinot. It's not all the not at all the style of wine you think of as uh, as coming from uh, southern France. But um, uh, what I remember about it, it's 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 one of those north facing slopes, quite high up, and uh, um, feels here like it's going to be uh, quite tender. Um, so there's a juiciness, and it feels like the fruit is lovely and ripe. There's a gentle raspberry, strawberry, um, maybe a little bit of spiciness in there too. Um, but it doesn't feel like anyone's forced it. If, uh, and I look at the colour and it's, it's, uh, it's not too deep in colour. It feels like someone has had a gentle hand here, and uh, which augurs well. Let's taste it. Oh, it's delicious. Um, lovely, juicy, rounded. Um, it's not the most complex of wine, but what it, what it is, it's satisfying. It's got this core of flavour. Uh, none of it stewed, none of it overripe, none of it on that stalky side that uh, uh, sort of implies that someone's tried to pick it early in terms of, uh, in, in, to try and get some freshness in there. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, I, it's, it, as, uh, as with the, the previous video, these, these have just come out of a, a reasonably cool storage uh, area and it's tasting extremely nice at that temperature but I've got a strong feeling that as it warms up uh, it's going to uncurl and uh, even more characters are going to come out uh, but I do like it nice wine wine number two um, we are uh, I think for the next two we're in Chile uh, so this one is at Pacifico Sur Reserva uh, from the Curico Valley 2011 I think they're both 2011 let's give it a whirl a little more stewed here. Uh, I get also some of that Chilean, uh, I don't know why Chilean wines have uh, so much reduction, but I get that that character here as if uh, someone has been a little bit too safe with it and uh, protected it from oxygen. In the process, the wine is almost like closed in on itself and uh, it may be that given a time it will blossom, uh, but a bit of spice, a bit of mint in there, almost some, some minty eucalyptus, um, and it feels like there's quite ripe, juicy, maybe slightly overripe fruit. So slightly overripe, slightly stewed. Uh, have my reservations about it, but I'll keep, keep swirling it for a bit longer and uh, see if it comes out of its shell. It's a bigger wine than the Clovion, but it's not, it's not, it hasn't got the subtlety. Um, and it feels like, so, as I say, it feels like the person who's been making it wants to just control it that little bit too much, um, uh, rather than let the fruit be. If um, Curico, it's, I mean, I'm not sure which, which bit of Curico it comes from, but there's cool bits of Curico and there's warm bits, so it's hard to uh, generalise about it. But here, it feels like the grapes got a little bit too ripe. There's uh, just an edge of the jamminess in there. Um, and um, this, yeah, this slight like, minty eucalypt that... Um, it's, it's a character, and uh, people say, oh, it's adding complexity. No, it's a character that, for me, doesn't quite fit in. Uh, it's not a success. You know, like if you add the wrong herb to, uh, to certain dishes, uh, they take over and uh, they clash rather than, uh, uh, than complement. Okay, let's try wine number three. Um, so still in Chile and Pinot Noir 2011, but this one is Tabali uh, Reserva Especial from uh, the Limery Valley, uh, which is um, one of the most northerly bits of uh, uh, vineyard regions of Chile. But uh, because it's uh, pretty close to the sea, uh, it's, it, it can get cool here. Anyway, let's try it. And this is more successful. Uh, it's got the allure, the allure, I don't know if you're a Miranda fan, but if you're not, I'll shut up. Uh, but it's got the allure uh, that Pinot Noir needs to have. Soft, gentle berry, uh, nothing overripe, nothing that feels like it's been forced. Feels like the winemaker here has more of a handle on the grape variety, and rather than just treating it as any old grape, has let it be, and uh, it, in the process, it's, it's made for a juicier, uh, friendlier style, and um, it, smells, it smells like it smells like it's gonna be quite a step up. Yeah, there's that juicy freshness here. Um, it feels uh, effortlessly lo lovely, yummy and drinkable. 
Um, it says on the back 10 months in oak, but you're not really noticing any of that, uh, apart from uh, the fact that it has softened nicely and uh, it's had any gawky edges rounded out. And it, the, the previous one had those, what I call that, that reduced character. Here it feels like that time in oak has rounded out some of those edges and people haven't been afraid to uh, do a little bit of racking of the wine, putting it from one barrel into the other, uh, to, uh, to in order to get a little bit, a bit of air in there. It's soft, juicy, gentle, tender wine, and uh, I would hoover that up with, uh, with some lamb. Um, I, I like that a lot. Tasty wine. Uh, let's see whether wine number four is a tasty wine. It is uh, de Bortoli's Windy Peak Pinot Noir 2010 from Australia. Uh, well, from the state of, of Victoria. I'm not sure whereabouts in Victoria. Uh, de Bortoli's got uh, quite a lot of Pinot Noir in the Yarra Valley, but uh, if it just says Victoria, it may be that they're sourcing fruit from elsewhere. Uh, but um, only one way to find out how good it is. Give it a whirl. Well, this also has the allure, um, and uh, paler in colour than the previous one. Uh, I think that they've done a little less extraction of the grapes, but it feels like the uh, uh, the fruit concentration it was there that the, was similar in the first place. They, uh, uh, they 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 both looked like they had good grapes, and um, they've not overworked them. Uh, and the result is he here. It's got this warm, gentle, juicy strawberry. Um, yeah, it, it feels like it's going to be um, a bit a bit a bit well. I better try it. It's not afraid to have its juiciness of fruit, but it's also not afraid to have that little bit of backbone of acidity and tanning. Um, I think in terms of its um, uh, chill friendliness, I think that the tabouli uh, probably is the more, uh, it would fit that I can serve it slightly cooler bill more than the, uh, uh, the Windy Peak. As for which is the better wine, I've got a feeling that as they warm up, um, uh, the cooler temperature of the table is my favourite. At, the, at a warmer temperature, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, uh, if it swaps over. I think they're, they're both pretty impressive wines. And um, yes, I actually they were all pretty impressive. I wasn't well, wasn't so, so sure about the uh, the uh, Pacifico Sur, but uh, the, but the other three were all really nice in terms of lamb and spring lamb friendliness. Maybe the Clavion and the Tabouli, but uh, I did like the Windy Peak. See you soon.